and meet here at three o'clock where we will be talking about the com commerce or the cognitive commerce in cars. Very interesting, very exciting. I see you here at three o'clock. Thank you. The commerce space. So how to make money out of these scenarios and in this case, uh, what to offer clients. Um, the, the scenario they are talking about is a what uh, in business modeling wise is called a, a um, multi-sided platform place that you know from many, many uh, uh, examples in the industry. eBay is a good example for this. So multi-consumers, multi-merchants are coming together over a platform and making offerings. So this is exactly what is this scenario about. Uh, on the one hand side, giving merchants, so people who want to sell things, the opportunity to address with ads, coupons and transactions like bookings or purchasings, uh, addressing people, consumers, while they are on the move. And this is including uh, the dashboard in the vehicle. It's not only about the dashboard, but it's including the dashboard. So this is scenar a scenario which is today not really, really tapped into. The platform in the middle um, has to have certain capabilities that we as IBM see very strong, uh, a strong need for, which is on the one hand side, the offers have to be put into a context. So where's the car? How is the person driving? Which mood is he in? Uh, does he have any special needs uh, normally when he's driving on this route and things like this. Uh, we want to learn about these behaviors, about these rituals, and, and at the end want to come to a very precise profiling to make the best offers. So this is a scenario that is recently very much in the discussion also of the automotive industry. Uh, the trends behind this, and let me speak a little bit about this, what, what is really addressed. So on the one hand side, the vehicle is becoming the third living room. This is a phrase that often has been repeated. So people spending 45 to 90 minutes, depending on where they live and uh, in which region they live, uh, in the car da daily. So this is three quarters of an hour to one and a half hours every day, sitting in a car and yeah, driving, today driving, because the space is not really discovered for, for the digital experience, let's say it. On the other sa side, and this is also an interesting number, 50 or six to, to 60 percent of the offline purchases, a car is involved. So people are driving in a car while they are doing the offline purchasing. So, so the car is already a part of their buying behavior or buying, buying rituals. The second thing that we are addressing is that there is a, on the consumer side, there is a willingness, the willingness is growing fast to do digital commerce in terms of getting ads, getting coupons, accepting coupons, doing purchases uh, online. This is a, um, a growing thing. And on the other hand, there's a, stark, uh, a strong re uh, requirement that this only works if the, if the offerings are meaningful to me. They are at the right moment and they are made for me. Not spamming with coupons, not spamming with ads, so really personalized offerings. And this is also a thing which are the uh, CMOs of the merchants are frustrated with, is that their conversion rate of their activities, uh, of their marketing activities are really poor because they are really missing this personalized offerings, this one-to-one -one marketing campaigns. Um, we as IBM, and uh, you already introduced this with our Watson technology, a learning technology, profiling technology, out of the cloud, we are partnering with automotive OEMs because also the automotive OEMs are really uh, have a high interest to enter that space because the car is theirs and they also have the car data which they have, let's say, preferred access to. 
and uh, combining this with already existing customer information from dealers gives them a good position to be a strong player in the market. So we are partnering with, with OEMs, and I will give a specific example afterwards, what that, that does mean, to connect the merchants with the, with the consumers. So we announced uh, last year, um, in the autumn last year, a partnership with General Motors for jointly bringing OnStar Go to the market, which is exactly uh, what I've talked about before. So it's a commerce platform which learns, which uh, is addressing the daily rituals uh, of, the, of, the, of the drivers and giving them um, personalized coupons, ads, and transactions. We started with uh, four, um, four merchants in the first phase. We are acquiring more, onboarding more, and uh, this platform that we built out um, technology-wise is owned by IBM. We are operating this out of our cloud. And uh, this is a OM agnostic platform, so we will start to engage with other clients uh, on the exact same uh, topic. And uh, there's an, the very interesting point here is about new revenue models and streams. So in this scenario at GM OnStar Go, the consumer is paying nothing for that service. The commercialization is happening that the, uh, we have different models how to, to contract with the merchants. We have subscription models. We have transaction-based models, so this, uh, the revenue in this model flows from the merchants to the platform, as it is in many multi-sided platform plays. Second engagement where we are doing similar things, slightly different with PSA, we signed a seven years partnership contract to monetize the data that PSA uh, is getting out of their connected vehicles. They have about 1.7 million vehicles on the road today. And uh, we have addressed three uh, use case areas. First is uh, we are selling the data of the cars to, the, uh, to smarter cities, so to cities in France, for their traffic management and, um, let's say, traffic um, planning. Also to agencies who work for the cities. Uh, second is that we have uh, generating B2B leads into the dealer, uh, dealer network of PSA. And uh, third is that we have uh, opened up an API economy program where startups can develop on top of real connected car data. So these are three, three business models or three, three revenue streams we have created jointly with, um, with PSA. And when I say jointly, um, I mean that we are, as IBM, uh, have started to engage in real partnership models with the OEM. So we have a garage phase and a factory phase. This is not uh, very special. So we have a first phase where we are co-creating, co-locating with our clients. We're sitting together in a room in an agile mold, creating new ideas. We have bought, uh, acquired, IBM has acquired some digital agencies like Aperto in Berlin. Uh, to get this competency on board. So we have uh, really invested here. We are doing a lot of business modeling work where I'm uh, deeply involved in, so creating this kind of new business models, uh, numbers, uh, click rates, and uh, subscription rate models, um, which are in, men in, in most cases uh, part of NDAs, so I cannot uh, dig into all the details here. So, and then we are building MVP, a lot of client testing, so how the clients are reacting to this kind of services uh, and services products. Um, this is, I think, this more or less standard agile approach. We are doing this um, jointly with the clients, by commitments of both sides for a longer time, so not only on a single use case. Um, and then if we are deciding, both parties, that we'll bring this product really to market, uh, we do this decision jointly, then we start a risk and revenue share model. So we share the development cost, the operational cost, and also share the revenue 
that is generated from the services. I think this is, this is really new. This is also new to, to IBM, and um, this is uh, highly appreciated by the industry because this, this type of business model then, or partnership model, is uh, shifting from, from CAPEX to OPEX cost, so from, from investment cost to operational cost uh, because we are sharing this and uh, providing this out of our, our cloud. So the first phase we are doing by commitment over a long time, in PSA case five years, and then the factory approach we're doing case by case. So for example, the selling leads to cities has a different revenue share than selling repair leads into the dealer organization. And it's also driven by uh, smarter cities. IBM is a sales lead role for the uh, sales to into the dealer um, organization. PSA is in a, in a lead role and the share of um, revenue is different. We are doing this on our, our platform that we have, microservices base. So this is uh, providing what's and technologies. We have bought the weather company. So we are having preferred access to weather data, which we think is a very relevant source within IoT use cases or these kind of use cases. We are partnering with map providers, oh sorry, map providers like here or like Zenrin because maps and location data is also very, very important. We are integrating Yelp, other things here into this um, scenario. So it's really about building an ecosystem around these, these business scenario. Yeah, um, I mean, I can speak for hours and hours on this because I'm, to be honest, I'm personally very excited about it and uh, I think it's a great opportunity. Uh, but I think I'll have to stop at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you very much. We have a few minutes for questions, so we can take a couple of questions. Um, anyone from the audience? Okay, can I have a go? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, you mentioned as a business model, and I, and I think fundamentally we get it, the revenue share of B2B revenues, we get it. Uh, the data one is the one where I, kind of, I, I see as probably the most complex to realize in light with GDPR. So everyone who has to do with OEMs uh, in the car industry, in the technology, come next year and we are all in very tight straight jacket. So how, you, how, how are you solving that kind of iceberg coming, uh, coming towards? To be honest, there's a very hard echo here. Can you okay. repeat it? <laughs> GDPR? the data protection, new data protection regulation. Yeah. How are you solving the issue around the new, more strict regulation with data sale? Yeah, data sales, I mean, this is, this is normally uh, the critical topic. I mean, uh, you only can do the data sales in a good way and learn and all the things of the uh, person is allowing you to use that data. So on the one hand side, we are looking for, for agreement with the, with the consumers or the other clients that, they, that we are used, uh, allowed to use the data. On the other hand, in many cases, also possible to use anonymized data and not personalized data for use cases. For the smarter cities, for example, use case, it's not important which person is driving there. It's, yeah. only, person, it's only important that cars are taking this route through the city. Okay. But we are completely in line with data regulations. And <laughs> what I'd like to mention here is also, um, this is why we are looking for a partnership with OEM. So we are, as IBM, not monetizing the data by ourselves. So we are uh, helping our clients to do this. This is a big difference. Thank you. Um, I very much like the idea of having the garage on the factory it's the wording of it and, and, and the, the, the semantic of it, as well as it gives you a proper structure and it, it actually gives you better governance, risk management, and all the instruments that you need. Um, from the garage, and you said everything is NDA, non-disclosure, but can you, can you share with us some ideas which you personally think are absolutely brilliant, which you're not going ahead with? Yeah, I mean, in the, first of all, thanks for the good comment on, or the positive comment on the garage and factory model, because 
what I see and what I discuss with clients is the I there are so many ideas around, so many MVPs. So this does not seem to be the problem at this point. The problem is more how to bring, how to create okay, yeah. products in front of a client, roll this out to market and operate it in a, in a, uh, in a good way so that you can earn money at the end. So this is, this is a challenge and this is, uh, I think, where, why we have created this integrated approach with rotating people from the garage to the factory and with all the experiences we as IBM have in building big systems and rolling this out. Uh, so ideas, I mean, we are going out uh, really on the street asking people and uh, what is your, uh, what is the services that they are uh, going after, is it coupons, is it parking, and uh, what we figure out is it's, it's, it's a combination of this. It depends very much on the, yeah, the context where the people live and where they are, but just to give you an idea, so everybody when I uh, pre pre present this is thinking about, okay, I'm driving, I get a, an advertisement and I'm bored. So this is a typical scenario why, especially in Europe and more especially in Germany, nobody believes that this, this is really, really working. Uh, but we have found out that there are special, special points at this r daily rituals where people are very open for recommendations, especially when they are parking. I mean, parking is a point where you normally stop and do something else. And if you get a coupon for things you normally buy, in this situation, this is very relevant to you. Another thing is uh, uh, fueling is also a uh, very much discussed topic. So I get a fueling coupon. I am routed to the next station where I have a, a, a loyalty program, or which is the cheapest one, and I get a coffee for free. So this is a typical, typical use case. I mean, this is nice, but uh, the uh, the to, to hit the right buying moment is, is very important. And it's amazing how m many different behaviors are uh, at consumers in terms of refueling. So some people like to drive as when they or refill their car when, they, when the tank is half full or half empty. Others like to refill their cars when it's almost empty. So you need to touch that point when this personally person typically refills the tank to get the coupon in place. And we are very much thinking about and investigating about how many coupons, which is the right time. It's different in markets, I can tell you, and it's different also to, to the behavior of, of individuals. Last question. And we uh, want to hit this. Yeah, a B2B model. So fundamentally, the great thing is you create recurring revenues. The flaw on that model to me, and I may just be not be seeing something, is that you are introducing an intermediary. Yeah, so you incrementally, you, you, you are sharing the margin between the B2Bs. How do we crack the B2C? And I mean, and people keep saying, a, a driver or car owner will not buy an app. You and I, I bet we have Spotify or Netflix or, or, or things that or our children have that we buy for. How do we crack that in-car monetization and a B2C concept? Yeah, I mean, uh, we have ideas around loyalty programs and giving, giving, giving uh, uh, um, coupons back or rabbits back or something like this. So get, um, get free, free, free gas liters or giving or mobility uh, minutes or whatever. So because it's a whole ecosystem that the OEM can build. It's not only around this commerce. So it's integrated. And this is also a discussion on is this a separate service or is this part of the services which the OEMs are already launching? And I believe it's part of these services that the OEMs are already launching, like parking, car sharing. So it will be cross service. Okay. Thank you very much, Stefan. Thank you very much. Big applause for Stefan. Thank you. Thank you.